Pastor Tim. Um, before I play a song for you, and we can do that now, if you see commercials on this channel, I want you to know that they are not because I am monetized. It's because when we play other people's copyrighted material, we're allowed to do that here, but then they can monetize it. So for those who say, hey, I'm getting commercials, that can happen, and that's why. But I, I have been enjoying sharing some music with you, so let's, let me pull up something while we wait for some folks. Oh, I'm having trouble here, guys. Okay, come on. Um, I, I want to give a couple housekeeping things up front. First, please make sure that you are subscribed. People tell me this all the time. Click the bell, click all, and please share our channel. Uh, and hit like or dislike. I did a video earlier with a, an urgent prayer call for Israel, and you know how that works with the algorithms. Please, please view that one if you have not seen it. It's not only a video, but it is also on the community wall. And please get that out there. Please share it. It is urgent right now, and you'll find out the details in that video. So I really encourage you to do that. And now let's see. While we're waiting, I do want to say also, if you don't know what I mean by being born again, please watch the video, Faith Plus Nothing Equals Salvation and Eternal Security. It really comes down to this. If you believe Yeshua, Jesus, is the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Christ, it all means the same thing. Christ is not his last name, that he always existed. He died for your sins, shedding his precious blood, paying your sin debt once and for all, past, present, and future, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. You are born again. It is in believing on Messiah. You're born again. You're indwelt with Holy Spirit. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption, heaven bound, and rapture ready. The gospel of our salvation is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. It is by pistuo, faith, by having trust in, faith in, believing on whom? On Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Messiah. And the nanosecond you do, it's a done deal. You are heaven bound and rapture ready. I love John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, are you whosoever, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. There are over 200 verses about solo fide. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. So let me see. Let me see what songs we have up here. Um, oh, let's see. Yes. You guys have heard, some of you have heard my testimony about 11 to 12 years ago when my heart ejection fraction was 5 to 12%. It's perfect now. And uh, they told me I was going to die that day. I'm not going to go into that again. I got my praise on. And one of the songs that I listened to was by Miss Tamala Mann. And it's called Take Me to the King. So I want to play that for you. We're just going to play one song tonight. But I want to play that for you. I really, really. Here we go. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart's torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to 
to address something and some of you may think I'm going to be harsh but I'm doing it out of love for you before I get into this news report I also want to remind you that unless there is something 
really major, I will not be in front of camera tomorrow. I will not do it. Um, we're celebrating when our Savior died on the cross for us, our hata'a, our sin offering and sacrifice. And, and even though I have a couple brief services where we'll have communion, if, if you want to take communion with the group, look at my message on Sunday. I'm just taking that time to be with the Lord. I want the time with the Lord to my extra time. I take time with the Lord and I want to be in that place with him. And I feel led to do that. So unless there's something really critical, you will not hear from me tomorrow. Now, what I'm going to say, and I get these kind of messages all the time, and this is not a condemnation on the dear sister who sent the message. Um, and I want to remind everyone, if you need to reach me, go to timhendersonministries.org, O-R-G, dot O-R-G, timhendersonministries.org, and you will be able to leave a message, and I check those, and you'll get a response from me, or timhenderson.tv. Either one will take you to the same place, and you'll be able to get a message from me on there. I check those myself, and until we have it where I can't do that, and then we'll We'll, we're looking to expand. We'll get staff to help with that. But in the meantime, you're going to hear from me. Anyway, I hear this all the time. Two things. One, if people are hateful, they will be blocked. If, if, and I have moderators who are amazing, and they, they have permission to block people who are hateful. You can, you can differ, but if you're hateful, you'll be blocked. If people come on and they're leaving comments that are fake and, and lies and making accusations that are just false that they may have heard from other videos or whatever, I'm going to give you an example. A man was blocked today. He came on and said, you prophesied that Donald Trump would have consecutive terms. That is a lie. I never, ever prophesied that. I did say, and I did not say, thus saith the Lord, that I believe that Donald Trump would be back in the Oval Office, and I still believe that. But I never prophesied that he would have consecutive terms. And a very hateful person came on, leaving these messages. That is a lie. Look, I'll say this. I have been wrong with things that I may think are going to happen, and I tell people, this is my prediction only. This is not a prophecy. But when I have said... I don't say, thus saith the Lord easily, but if I hear from the Lord, it has always come to pass. And I'm not bragging, because God is always right. And if I was wrong, I would admit it, and I would seek the Lord, and I would take a period of time off of here. But they're lies. Listen, you, you can disagree with me, but if people are going to come on here and continue to spew lies and false information, you'll be blocked. If you're going to be hateful and bash or bully others, you will be blocked. So just know that. Otherwise, you can have a differing opinion. We're, we don't do that. But this is my channel. I give God all the glory. And so there you have it. Um, and if you have an issue, you can message me at the places that I told you. And I will respond. Next. I hear this all the time. Pastor Tim, you're talking about Israel. And a trip to Israel. Yes. And I believe that the war will be over. Over. I believe. That is not a thus saith the Lord. But I believe. I really do believe that. That it will be over. And I call for prayer for Israel. What's going on right now? Look at the video that I did earlier. And people say to me, I can't believe it. The way you're talking. We'll be here past this year. Yeah. We very well could be. But we also could be gone today. We don't stop occupying and redeeming the time and planning. Everything that is needed for the rapture to be done has happened, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying that we will or won't, but I have never set dates, and I won't. God's appointed time is perfect. I've been telling people, because we know that we are on the last leg of this race, meaning we are at the end of this dispensation. We know this from biblical timing, and the signs 
right? And Jesus said, watch the fig tree, Israel, and the other trees. Does that mean this year? Does it mean five years? I don't know. But I want, now here's where people are going to think I'm being hard, but I am not being hard. When I hear things like, and I know you're overwhelmed, but I want you to put it in perspective. Christians are the most persecuted group in the world. And I am not talking about in the United States of America. Yes, we are under persecution, but Christians are under, and I'm not going to go into the details, in the world have suffered greatly and throughout time. We know why. We know the fall of man. We, listen, I'm not going to get into all that, but I want you to think about this. When I hear things like, I can't go another day, I just want the Lord to come, we should want the Lord to come because he's our bridegroom. And yes, we should be excited about that. But I want to caution you. If your only reason is because of how hard your life is, I've done videos on praying and taking your authority as a believer. And despite in good times and bad times, I've been there, folks. I've been there. You, those who have been with me for a while on this channel family, you know I lost the only woman I ever loved. And in the midst of that, the horrible accusations, which were unfounded and untrue, I'm trying to grieve my wife and fulfill the call of God. And yet it's been over three years now. I can declare to you the goodness of God in the land of the living because I have Yeshua, Jesus, because I am born again. It doesn't mean I don't miss her. It doesn't, but that was a horrible, horrible thing that I had never gone through before. I've lost parents. We've lost children. And it was horrible. But this was something I could not even fathom. I could have empathy for people, but I have lived it. It's like a ripping apart. So I understand many of you are going through things. Our dear sister Jan recently lost her husband after a long battle with illness, and he was sticking around, I believe, for a long time for her. And yet she is declaring the goodness of God, and I know she's hurting. And Jan, if you're watching, we love you, and we're praying for you. And many of you have messaged me with the same thing. I want you to understand, if you are so overwhelmed, that you say, well, I don't want to hear that we're at the end. He hasn't come yet. That should be a joyful thing for the believer. And if you're coming from that perspective, something is out of alignment. I want you to understand that. It's out of alignment. And I tell you this out of love. I encourage you to be renewed in your mind. Know your position in Christ in the heavenlies far above all power, dominion, rule, and authority. Be renewed and washed in the purity of the truth of God's word. We're going to keep sharing what's going on with the geopolitical that ties to the prophetic because we are literally seeing prophecies jump off the pages of the Bible. Jesus is coming very, very, very soon. That's a reality. We can see it because we know the word of God. But when I say that, how soon, I don't know, but I do know it's in our lifetime, and I can't guarantee our next breath, but we know this, to be absent from the body as born-again believers is to be present with the Lord. And I know this also from the word of God. Someone who was alive when the budding of the fig tree, Isaiah's prophecy, the budding of the fig tree, when Israel became a nation state again on May 14th, 1948, someone who was alive then will be alive when the Lord returns. There you have it. Uh, many try to define a generation, but brothers and sisters, that's the time period we're in. And if that depresses you because I'm not giving you a date or saying we're absolutely going to be raptured this year, I want you to check your attitude and I, and I want you to seek the Lord. I want you to go to the Lord and ask him to reveal to you um, not the timing, but his destiny, his ministry, his call in your life. So we know we're at the end. I don't know about you, 
but I want to glorify God with my life. I want to fulfill the destiny, the ministry, the anointing, the call that he has on my life. We're at the end. Until he comes, we should be looking up and rejoicing, not in depression and saying, I can't go another day. And, and I want to tell you, we in the West, we often do that. And you do not have to look far to find folks who are going through way worse than we are. And so you need to take those thoughts captive. Think how privileged we are as chaotic and crazy and sobering as these times are. While we're living in those kind of times, we are living in the most exciting time in church history. Now, the other thing I hear people say is, I don't want things to get better. I, better. I want it to continue downward so that he'll come. No, nothing needs to go worse or continue down a, a negative trajectory for Jesus to come. You're confusing what is coming in the tribulation, and the tribulation is casting its shadow into this time period for the Lord to come. He could come today. We should be praying for revival in the churches and an awakening to God in the world and for more to be saved. And I know many of you are going to say, he's being harsh. I'm not being harsh, but I want you to understand. You're, get rid of that stinking thinking. That, what's that doing for you? Many, of, many are all depressed and bound up and heavy burdened and heavy laden. Shake that stuff off. Get your praise on. And thank God that he has a call on your life. And, and let's run this race, right? We are, the Bible refers to um, until, the, until the restrainer is gone. Who's the restrainer? Holy Spirit. Who are the temples of Holy Spirit? We are born-again believers. Once the rapture happens, pardon the French, but all hell is going to break loose on this planet. Praise God. We're going to be in the, at the wedding supper of the Lamb. What we have awaiting for us is amazing. And yes, we look forward to it. We see, we encourage one another. It's not the blasted hope. It is the blessed hope. Who's our blessed hope? Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Praise God, our Redeemer. Woo! It's good. So I want you to be excited. Absolutely. And, and we know we're going to continue watching and looking. Of course we are. Actually, I want to look up a scripture here. Give me just a second. You guys can fellowship for a moment. I thought I had that written in here with a commentary, but I'm not finding it. So I'm just going to go and read it. So that's what we'll do. I'll just go read it, but I'll try to find that commentary. Okay, I'm going to start reading. I'm going to read the whole thing. Here we go. Since I can't find that paper that I printed out for a time like this, I'm going to read from Titus. We're going to start with chapter 1, verse 1. I will get to the news report, but thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm being led to do this. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth, which leads to godliness and hope, of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began, and has in due time revealed his word through preaching, with which I was entrusted according to the command of God our Savior, to Titus, my own son in the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. For this reason, I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. Any man who is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children who are not accused of being wild or unruly. For an overseer must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not easily angered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, self-controlled, just, holy, temperate, holding firmly the trustworthy word that is in accordance with the teaching that he may be able both to exhort with sound doctrine and to convince those who oppose it. For there are many unruly men, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, who must be silenced, who subvert whole houses by teaching for dishonest gain, things they ought not teach. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and idle gluttons. This witness is true. So rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myths and commandments of men who reject the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Even their minds and consciences are defiled. They profess that they know God, but in their deeds they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and worthless for every good work. But as for you, teach what is fitting of sound doctrine. Older men should be sober, serious, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. Likewise, older women should be reverent in behavior and not be false accusers, not be enslaved, to much wine, but teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, and to be self-controlled, pure, homemakers, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God may not be dishonored. Likewise, exhort young men to be self-controlled, in all things presenting yourself as an example of good works, in doctrine showing integrity, gravity, incorruptibility, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that the one who opposes you may be ashamed, being having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient to their own masters, to please them well in everything, not answering back or stealing, but showing complete fidelity, so that they may exemplify the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live soberly, righteously, and in godliness in this present world, as we await the blessed hope Here it is. As we await the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to read that again. As we await the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. See, many times we hear that, but we forget about the rest. And I want to encourage you tonight. You're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace, grace is God's unmerited favor. It's getting what we don't deserve. If we got what we deserve, that's not good. God gives us what we don't deserve. We are heirs of God when we believe on Yeshua. We are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ Jesus. That means identical heirs. That's amazing. 
So we forget about the rest, but that's salvation. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10, for we are created in his workmanship unto good works, which he prepared or preplanned beforehand. All these things that the Apostle Paul is telling them, instructing them in godliness, is not about their salvation, but it's about our reasonable service. It's about honoring God with our lives. And who doesn't want to do that? As we await the blessed hope, I'm going to read it again. Titus 2.13. And the appearing, this is amazing, of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to finish too, and then we're done with the book of Titus. You just got a reading of the book of Titus. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all lawlessness and purify us and purify for himself a special people, zealous of good works. We're not saved by works. We're not kept saved by works. We are saved for works that he preordained for us. Now, anything we do apart from faith in the Holy Spirit, the Bible says is the dead work of the flesh. So keep it in perspective. Teach these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. And chapter three, the last chapter. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey them, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, not to be contentious, but gentle, showing all humility toward everyone. We also were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various desires and pleasures, living in evil and envy filled with hatred and hating each other. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward mankind appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying and these things I want you to constantly to affirm so that those who have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to everyone. But avoid, but avoid foolish debate, genealogies, contentions, and arguments about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject a divine man after a first and second admonition, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, be diligent to come to me in Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Diligently send Zanus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey. See that they lack nothing and let our people also learn to continue doing good works to meet urgent needs, that they may not be unproductive. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are privileged to serve in these final moments of the end of days. And we're told <laughs> about our blessed home, hope, and, and to be diligent. Why? Paul knew that they were in the end times, and they were. They were the beginning of the dispensation of the 2,000-year period. We're at the end of it. Praise God. How much more excited should we be? Well, I wanted to give that admonition. I want to encourage you to see... We could, listen, you're still born again. You can say, I'm going to stay depressed and offended. And if you're born again, you're born again. You're heaven bound. But oh, brothers and sisters, what a privilege. What a privilege to serve 
the one who gave his all for us in this period of time. So rejoice! Our redemption draweth nigh. We should be the people with a pep in our step, encouraging others, a light in a darkened world. Praise God. Praise God for the privilege. I hope it encourages you. Well, we're just going to go down one by one, and I'm going to talk a little bit about these things. A shout out to Sister Ashley, Brother Jordan, Brother Keegan, Brother Clayton, all our prophecy reporters. Hezbollah threatens the red heifers. We've been talking a lot about the red heifers and their plan to sacrifice them. They do not need a temple to do that. They can do that for purity so that they are ready for, for service in the holy place in the temple. I'm telling you, we, this is amazing what we are seeing. But Hezbollah literally today threatened the red heifers. U.S. not willing to give Israel any weapons it wants right now. Now, I'm going to skip down. This is very, very serious. U.S. intel agency wants to ban the terms radical Islamist and jihadist. Brothers and sisters, what we are seeing is the globalists, the elites, the New World Order rising right before our very eyes. And here, I'm going to tie this one to it too. Biden's UN betrayal. You heard me. Now, I have to say this. Don't count anything that I share as political, medical, or financial advice. There's a lot of things on the internet. We know there's fake things. So take it as my opinions only. I have to state that, and you guys know why. Biden's UN betrayal of Israel is a fundamental shift. The UN abstention on the vote in the UN Security Council for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza isn't just a routine political or diplomatic maneuver. It's a fundamental betrayal of the U.S.-Israeli alliance. The consequences of this go far beyond the immediate circumstances in which the White House believe that its political interests require it to force the Jewish state to give up the goal of eliminating Hamas from the Gaza Strip. And what Kamala Harris has said, Biden has said, Antony Blinken has said, what they're pushing, brothers and sisters, they can try to make us believe all they want, that the alliance is intact, but it is not. And I am telling you, they are shaking their fist in the face of our holy God. And this is very dangerous. This is why we have prayed together and stood in the gap. And please, please watch that video earlier and share it and pray for Israel. There's important information there. And stand in the gap for our nation in repentance for our nation, for what is happening. It could not be soon enough till they are out of office. This is very concerning to me, but we have nothing to fear. We truly don't. Um, praise God, we know how the, how the account ends. Well, in other news, IDF begins isolating Rafa and orders 40,000 tents, even though the UN, the US, and nations of the world overwhelmingly are coming against Israel for this. Again, watch the video earlier. You'll understand more about that. IDF confirms killing of Hamas senior official official at Gaza's uh, Sheaf Hospital. Netanyahu, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, rejects Gaza deal outlined before meeting the hostage families. Listen, Hamas's deal that they want to offer is ridiculous. Israel must, again, watch the video earlier and pray with me and pray. Um, they're going neck to neck even now. They know where those hostages are. Be praying. But look at that video earlier. Israel carries out strikes on building 
near Syr Syria's Damascus. And the High Court of Justice in Israel today issued a blockbuster decision sent ending a significant portion of state funding to Haredi Yeshivot beginning on April 8, 1. This is that their young men did not have to go and be enlisted in the IDF. Well, they're ending that. They're ending the funding if they don't do that. This has been, that is an orthodox sect. This has been a real divisive issue, but they're saying no more. A fleet of Russian naval warships entered Bab al-Mandab Strait into the Red Sea amid terror attacks by Houthi rebels on merchant shipping lanes. Brothers and sisters, surrounding Israel, enemies surrounding Israel, dealing with Hezbollah, dealing with the Houthis, dealing with Hamas and this war, we need to pray for Israel. And last but not least, Michigan, the state of Michigan in the U.S., is giving refugees $6,000, 500 per month, over the 12-month period to help them with housing. This is absolutely deplorable. These are illegals in our nation. If you have not seen what is going on, they now want to pass laws that they can vote. They want... I, I, in every direction you're looking. In Chicago, they can be police officers and carry guns. I can't. This is ridiculous. Why are they not giving housing efforts to our veterans, to those who are down and out, to citizens? This is outrageous, but this is part of their plan. I'm telling you. Again, my opinion only, but this is part of their plan. We are watching this thing play out in these final moments of the end of days. We're going to continue bringing you the news, and I'm going to give you my opinions on it, and uh, I, I hope that you enjoy it. Again, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. I, I should not be on tomorrow, but if something major happens, I will come on. Uh, I'll be staying tuned for that. I will be back on, Lord willing, on Saturday with a, with a detailed prophetic update, and then there'll be a message, maybe a lakeside chat for the online family. Um, because I'm integrating children into my Resurrection Sunday and some of those parents would not want their children out there. And for those who have been following me, you know the horrible things that were done, said about my children, the attacks on them, my grandchildren. And, and you know, um, some of my children don't care if I have my grandchildren on here. And so I'll continue doing that. Um, they've learned to just flush it, the lies, the accusations, but it is an attack. And uh, so others aren't, I, you know, I can't do that, but I will have a message for you. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And just know that God loves you. If you're nothing else, I said, God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Remember, greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. And the same spirit that raised Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ from the dead, abides in you. That means you have resurrection power in you. Take your authority. Pray the prayer in Ephesians 1, 17 through 2, 7. Take your seat of authority. Well, since I'm not going to be on tomorrow, most likely, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah. I pray and I bless you. Amen. God bless you guys. He loves you. I love you. Shalom, shalom, and have an awesome rest of your day.